Um, okay, this is a program offered by Northwest Village Network. Joan Adler is a member and she's also a volunteer advisor about Medicare. And this is um, an important period when it's possible to change your enrollment. So that's why it, we're sort of rushed into asking Joan to do this program. And now Joan will explain more about it. Well, you were gonna gonna, say oh, just sorry, I'm gonna mute everybody. And then um, Joan, I don't think Well, now you're muted, so I don't hear what you're saying, but you were going to do a little <laughs> I was going to West Village, no? Um, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Northwest Village is a, a volunteer group of people who want to continue living in their homes as they age. And they support each other. We support each other um, socially and intellectually and in all sorts of ways um and it's uh i i don't have the a written thing so if anyone else wants to add something please do Faye, do you, <laughs> you want to put in what okay. i left out? <laughs> uh, no it's just um you know our programs run from educational to uh well educational to fun and um we have a lot of social gatherings and um, yeah, I'm not sort of in a mindset to do a good summary either. Maybe other people can kick in what they want to say. <laughs> oh, anyway. Okay, well, I think we can start doing. Okay. Oh, well, I was I, going to mute everybody, sorry. I, okay. I muted myself when I wanted to mute everyone. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so everybody who's already on Medicare, raise your hand. I am, but what happened? Uh, Joan, you have to unmute. <laughs> you yeah. muted me. Okay. Yes. The reason, actually, the reason that I'm a member of Northwest Village is because a couple of years back, I was invited to speak to a group from Northwest Village at the Chestnut Hill Library. So you know how long ago that was. And um, afterwards, I went out, I think, for lunch or for something with a bunch of people that had been at the meeting and they told me about Northwest Village and I thought, oh, that sounds like a great idea. So that's how I became a member. But at any rate, um, I wanted to talk to you just briefly. I usually do longer presentations for Malt and for East Falls Village and libraries, various other organizations. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk to this group tonight is because we're in the middle of the annual enrollment period. And not like it sounds, this is not the time to enroll in Medicare. This is actually the time of the year that everybody should review their plans and see if there's a better plan for next year. So that means if you have um, a Medicare supplement and a drug plan, this is the time to review your drug plan for next year to make sure that you uh, that the prices are not going up on your plan. I mean, most people end up changing their plans every year because the formularies change on the drug plans and uh, the costs change. So it's always a good idea to check it once a year, and this is the time to check it for the for next year's plans. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, which is one of the HMOs, this is also a time that you're entitled to change your plan. So if you change it now, your plan becomes effective in January, but then there's another Medicare Advantage plan enrollment period, which is January, February, and March of next year, when you can change your plan and the new plan starts the following month. So for anybody who has not checked what their plan is going to be next year, you might want to call either me or call our office. Uh, we have two offices now in Philadelphia. We used to have a third office, but that is no longer. So there's an office at Einstein, which I'm affiliated with. And there's an office in Center City at an organization called CARI 
which is the Center uh, for Advocacy for the Rights and Interests of the Elderly, that's us. And they have uh, PA Medi counselors down there too. And that's Laura is in training to be one of those counselors with Carrie. Uh, the mo many, many, most of the other counselors that are down there, um, I had a, a hand in training because I used to be the director of the office at the mayor's commission, which is no longer. So um, briefly, let me share my screen. No, this is not going to work. You don't see this. No. Let's go back. I don't know if I can share this particular thing. Can you can you see introduction to PA Medi? Yes. Oh, good. It worked. Okay, so the, I'm going to just run through this very briefly and I'm here uh, to answer any questions about Medicare, but especially uh, open enrollment issues. But um, PA Medi is the local state of Pennsylvania name for a national organization called the State Health Insurance Program, which is called SHIP. And SHIP has uh, Medicare counselors in every state. And some, of, some states have counselors in every county or every few counties. We used to be called a prize, don't know why. They changed our name to PA Medi, don't know why, but that's who we are now, but you may know us as SHIP. And um, we're funded through the federal government, through the, the uh, area agencies on aging. We're a not-for-profit agency made up primarily of volunteers who are very well trained to counsel about Medicare. We are not associated with any insurance plans and we don't get paid. And we certainly don't get paid for signing people up. Um, during the COVID pandemic, most of us are working from home, but a couple of people are in the office and might see clients in the office. So the main thing that we do is one-on-one -on -one counseling with people about their particular issues with Medicare. We help people find the best plans for themselves. And we do that in an unbiased and completely private manner. Um, but also I make a lot of presentations. Um, we get extensive training. Uh, some of my counselors uh, said it's almost like getting a PhD in Medicare, which is true. Uh, and we have constant supervision or, you know, times that we talk to each other about cases and learn more. I learn something new every day. And so we talk about everything. We tell people when to sign up and when not to sign up. We talk about the premiums, the deductibles, the co-pays, the co-insurance, networks, referrals, late sign-up penalties. And then there are programs for low-income people and there are high-income adjustments. We talk about those. Um, this year, these are some of the costs. Uh, hospital deductible this year is, has gone up. Uh, the hospital co-payments, if you're in the hospital for less than 60 days, Medicare pays that entirely. Um, if you're in for longer than that, there's usually a big copay. Um, again, skilled nursing facilities, uh, Medicare pays completely for the first 20 days, but after that, there's a copay. And some people pay a Part A premium, but mostly Part A is free if you've worked for 10 years in this system. Um, Excuse me, there, Jen. Yes. Um, we're seeing, um, I think that there's a way for you to enlarge this so that we're not seeing your computer screen. Oh, I know what you mean. Just, okay. Yes, the slides. Right. Oh, there it is. That what you mean? That's what you mean. Yes, that's great. Okay. <laughs> um, there is also a list of penalties if you don't enroll when you're supposed to. And the reason for this is, like all insurance plans, they want people to start paying in when they're younger and healthier and not just start joining when they have a million things wrong and are going to cost the system a lot of money. So most people who don't have a Part A um, cost 
don't have to worry about a penalty. The minute you turn 65, even if you're working, you have Part A if you want it. And the question is if you want to ask for your Medicare card. Part B is something that you should not be getting if you're working. And but you do want to start that when you stop working. And if you don't take your Part B when you're supposed to get it, when you're no longer covered by some other insurance, there is a 10% penalty for each year that you've delayed enrollment, and that goes on forever. And there's a Part D drug plan penalty of 1% for every month that you didn't have coverage, and that goes on forever as well. Um, Currently, the um, Part B premium is $148.50 a month, but next year it's going up to $170.10. The good news is we're all going to get a 6% increase in our Social Security if we're taking Social Security. Um, in addition, there's a Part B annual deductible which this year it's $203 and next year it's gonna be $233. Um, so I was talking about the high income and the low income adjustments. Uh, this is an example of the grid to, for low income programs. We also have other uh, things that we can help you with besides uh, these government programs. There's PACE and PACENET which helps uh, pay costs of medications. And they have requirements that start at, at a higher income level. So if you're in any of these categories, you can apply for PACE and PACENET. And there's uh, something called Medical Assistance for Workers with Disabilities, and that's MAUD. And so if a person is under 65, and they've been on social security disability for two years, they automatically get enrolled in Medicare and can get all the same kinds of plans that the rest of us can get. Uh, and we try to help people choose the best plan, but if you're already all in Medicare, you all have a plan, so I don't have to go into this uh, as much. We also help with special cases. A lot of people have retirement insurance and for some people that goes on forever. And for some people it lasts for five years and every system is a little bit different. So we need to know about all these different ways that people get retirement insurance. And then there are people um, who have Medicare and Medicaid and they have some special plans. Um, so really, we, we talk to everybody about whatever their special need is. Uh, if you're turning 65 and you're working and you're covered by a group health plan, you don't need to enroll in Medicare unless you're in a very small company. So we tell you not to get your Part B because then you'll be paying for something you don't use. Um, you will have a special enrollment period when you stop working to enroll in Medicare. And this, it's, they really need to just change this period to annual enrollment because it's not an open enrollment. Like I said, you can't just join up if you um, don't have an enrollment period to start, but this is really a time to change your plans. And it occurs every year at the same time, October 15th to December 7th. And like I said, there's also a special enrollment period for people with Advantage plans. If they don't enroll during this period, they can enroll January, February, or March. So these are our numbers. Um, I'm also in the Northwest Village Handbook. You can get my number there. This number is also in the telephone book if anybody still has one of those. Um, and usually we counsel by appointments. So you have to call me to set up an appointment. Uh, so let me see, there's something in the chat. Okay, um, that's really not a, yes, you can take screenshots. I don't know if that was a question or not. Um, so does anybody have any particular questions or I, I kind of like to address why people have come and answer, you know, the questions that are relevant to you. So if anybody has any. 
Yeah, Barbara. I have, I have, yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm not clear on what Medicare Advantage means. Oh, okay. So we'll go back to that. <laughs> okay. All right, so let me share. Okay, so a quick look at Medicare. I always assume, and I, and I know I'm wrong, that anyone that's on Medicare understands Medicare, but nobody understands Medicare, so I shouldn't make that assumption. So when you have Medicare, there are three parts to Medicare. Medicare Part A covers your hospital expenses, but only 80%. Medicare Part B covers your outpatient services, doctors, outpatient procedures, uh, medical equipment, labs, x-rays, a lot of preventive services and any durable medical equipment, but it only pays for 80%. And then there's a drug plan, which is called Part D. So put them all together, A, B, and D, and they you get a Medicare Advantage plan that calls itself Part C, but it's not really a part, it's just an advertising gimmick. And these are the HMOs and the PPOs that you can choose. So you have two different ways of taking your Medicare, but you have Medicare on either option. So option two is the Medicare Advantage plan. They're all HMOs or PPOs. They have networks. And if you go outside the network for an HMO, they won't pay for you. If you go outside the network for a PPO, they will cover you, but you will have a larger copay than you would ordinarily. Um, some of them require referrals before you see a specialist, and they all have copays. So, if you take a Medicare Advantage plan, it's probably a good idea to get a zero monthly premium plan so you can save all your money for the copays. And I can go over those. I have a chart that shows what some of the co-pays are like. So on this side, you're going in for a zero monthly premium. You're not paying now, but as you get older and sicker, your co-pays are gonna go up and it's kind of unpredictable what you're going to have to pay as you get older. On the option one side, which is original Medicare, you don't have any networks. You can see any doctor or go to any facility that takes Medicare um, and Medicare pays 20%, it pays 80%. The other 20% is covered by Medigap supplement. And that's a separate insurance policy that people buy. They're called Plan F or Plan G or Plan N. And they pay the other 20%. And then in addition, you get a separate drug plan. Whereas on this side, your drug plan is included with your plan. So the, Medica the Medicare Advantage plans include Part A, Part B, and a drug plan. And on the original Medicare side, you're, you have your Medicare card with Part A and Part B, you add a drug plan, and then you usually get a Medigap supplement. And these supplements, because they're insurance policies, they charge you a monthly fee, but then after you pay that fee, <laughs> Uh, there's very little out of pocket that you will ever have to pay if you have a Medigap. You do not change these, you keep them because if you get a Medigap during the first six months of your Part B, you're allowed to get a Medigap without them asking you any medical questions. So this works very well for people who have chronic conditions and pre-existing conditions. The only medical question they're allowed to ask you is, do you smoke? So once you get a Medigap, as you get older, if you start acquiring diseases, uh, if you try to get a new Medigap, there's no guarantee that they have to sell you a policy. And then they're allowed to jack up the prices and charge you whatever they want. Whereas if you get a Medigap, when you first go on Medicare, you go in at the lowest possible price. So... Does that explain the difference? Yes, thank you. 
So again, what can change? So the only thing that changes from year to year is if you're on original Medicare, you wanna change your drug plan. And if you're on Medicare Advantage, you may wanna change your entire plan. But when you do that, and you might wanna do that because again, the drug plan is in there and those costs will change. But once you start changing your Advantage plan, you have to make sure that your doctors and your hospitals and your specialists are all in the network. So it gets a little bit complicated. And I have handouts that I um, distribute that show the um, Medigap supplement coverage, what the different plans cover. And I have a, another chart that shows what all the co-pays are for the HMOs and the PPOs. So does anyone have questions about, about this? I, I do. Um, you, didn't, you didn't go over this yet, but uh, there's, there's like annual limits to how much you can pay on these Advantage plans. Yes, right? so you, let's look at the Advantage plans. Good point. My, so my, under, my, under, my understanding is there's no limit to how much you can be charged if you only have original Medicaid. Ah, uh, you see, you listen to too many commercials mm -hmm. because that's what the people who are hawking all the Advantage plans on television tell you. But the reality is when you have a Medigap supplement, yeah. you pay your monthly premium. Yeah. And the only other thing that you pay is your first, your, your Part B deductible, which next year is gonna be $233. So once you've paid your, your Part B deductible for the year, all of the co-pays and deductibles and co-insurances are covered by your Medigap, no matter how high the price. So when you say there's no limit, there's no limit to how much they'll cover. There is a limit to your out-of-pocket. Your out-of-pocket is just your monthly premium and your small Part B deductible each year. Whereas if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, these are the HMOs. So they all have co-pays. So if you look at these plans, okay, so the other thing is, is that the Advantage plans are county specific. So if you go to Oklahoma to visit the grandchildren, you're not covered by your Philadelphia plan. Whereas if you have original Medicare and your supplement, you're covered all over the country. So the Advantage plans that are for Philadelphia, these are all of them. Yes? We're, we're back to um, seeing your computer screen rather than just the slide. This is not a slide. I'm sharing my screen because this is a chart. Okay, but can, I can't can really you, make, I don't know if I can make this bigger. Oh, okay. Yeah, if I make it bigger, you won't be able to see the whole thing. That's okay. So this is not, a, these are not slides anymore. There's nothing I can do about this. If I knew how to hide this, no, that's not the way. Okay. Okay, that, that works a little. So when you look at these Advantage plans, you see that um, these are the monthly premiums. Some of them have quite a huge deductible before they even start kicking in. Uh, some of them have a zero premium to see your primary. Some of them charge you money to see your primary. And if you go out of network, some of them will charge you a full 40% or 10% or 20% of whatever uh, Medicare will pay. So your co-pays are gonna be higher. They all charge you money for your specialist visit anytime you go. So if you have to see your specialist twice a month, you get hit twice a month for these costs. If you have outpatient procedures, some of them have a flat rate, some of them have a sliding scale. And when you're in the hospital, they all have 
a pretty big copay for you going in the hospital. So because you're paying so much out of pocket, they have to put a maximum out of pocket on your account. So if you start getting into the place where you're reaching these maximum out of pockets, if you're smart, you're gonna to try to go back and join a Medigap plan, which does not have a limit to how much they will cover for you. Now they suck people into these plans by saying they cover vision, dental, hearing, transportation, fitness, worldwide communications, and telehealth. But when you look at it very carefully, they actually cover very little of those services. And I saw that somebody had their hand up. So you can unmute and just ask your question. So what percentage of people that you work with take the traditional Medicare or get as you said, sucked into the Advantage plans? Well, I think it's a matter of economics because okay. the, advan the Medicare supplements start at about not, a little bit below $100 a month. Uh, or if you want a better plan, you know, it goes up from there. So there are a lot of people that I work with that cannot afford or don't think they can afford $100 a month for a Medigap plan. And they see these big zeros and they think, wow, I can get a plan for zero. Why should I buy one for $100? What they don't think about is that they get older and sicker and then they start paying all these copays. And then, you know, you cannot get back into a reasonably priced Medigap, although there are some extremely high priced Medigaps that will take you if you're sick. Um, and actually, they'll never add up to $7,000 a year. So I think it's a matter of understanding how insurance works and being able to afford to buy that. We never advise people to take a, uh, a Medigap, I mean, a, a Medicare Advantage plan that has a copay because when you look at the copays, the plans that have copays and the plans that don't have copays, you'll see that there's really very little difference between the benefits for somebody that's got a zero premium plan and somebody that's paying through the nose. And by the way, if you're paying this much for an advantage plan, you should be paying that for a Medigap instead, because why do you want to pay this kind of money to let somebody manage your care, to limit your network, and still charge you co-pays for every service you get? So it has to do with how people process the information and what they can afford and how much they understand what we're telling them. And of course it behooves, the advantage plans are to the advantage of the advantage plans because the way advantage plans work is the government pays the advantage plan a pot of money for your capitated life. And if you never go to the doctor, they get to keep all that money. And they only have to use that money for your health care if you show up. And then they can also charge you co-pays. So they really are quite a profit-making um, institution. That's why they can afford Joe Namath and J.J. Walker and Captain Kirk on television endlessly to shill for these plans. The other thing that you see all the commercials on TV to call this Medicare helpline, those are all salespeople and they all make money by signing you up and their incentive is to sign you up for obviously the most expensive plan that you buy because their commissions are higher depending on the plan that you buy. But you know, if you're a fairly healthy person, um, an advantage plan may work for you. Uh, and if you don't have any other choice, you have to make it work for you. But if you can afford to get a Medigap, it's generally more cost-effective in the long run. 
And the way that the advantage plans got all this government backing is because they yeah. claimed that they would be a less of a cost for healthcare. And it turns out, guess what? They're not. So the government likes them because the government then knows how much they're paying every year. They can budget it better than leaving it up to people to get sick and they have no idea how many people will get sick that year. So, mm -hmm. um, but for an individual who can afford a Medigap, it's a very good way to go. Good. Thank you very much on that. Sure. Any other questions, things I have not covered yet? I don't, I really want to do it according to what people want to hear because, uh, you know, I can talk forever. I've got a million different things to show you, but so I Joan, don't want to, yeah. Joan, um, so if you travel abroad. Yes. You want to just speak to that? Which yes. of the so um, if, Medicare plans work better on that? Yes. So Medicare does not cover you when you step outside the country. Okay. Medicare. However, we didn't talk about the Medigap. We talked a little about the Medigaps, but let me show you more about the Medigaps if I can find them. They may be here. They're not here. Once you get a million things open, it's hard to find what you want. Here we go. All right, let me try to share again. You know, you go to Europe, you go to whatever, to go see grandchildren. <laughs> you know? Yes, so, you know, it's this is gonna be very hard to find. Let me see if it's in this section. Uh, I have too much open, but let me just tell you, I don't have to share my screen. I can send this out uh, to people later. If you get a Medigap supplement on original Medicare, your yep. Medigap will cover 80% of any emergency health care that you need when you travel outside the country after you pay a, a deductible. Um, so that is the only part of Medicare that really covers you when you go out of the country. Right. Uh, but it's good to know that you have it. And yes, the Medigap on original Medicare covers you wherever you go in the United States and Puerto Rico, I think as well. Um, but like I said, the advantage plans are really um, linked to your county. So if you so never go to the county, fine, but. <laughs> well, and if, you, and if you have an advantage plan with a big national insurance company, Hmm. and you tell them you want to go to Oklahoma to visit the grandchildren, you know, Keystone or Aetna or Cigna, they will probably give you the name of a doctor that you can see in Oklahoma if you happen to get sick. If you take some local plan like Health Partners or Clover or Allwell, they're just local. They don't have a network outside of Pennsylvania. So that's another consideration. So that's why we do so much individual counseling because everybody has different needs and different things that they want from a plan. And when you have a network, you need to be sure that you get a plan that your doctors that you care about are in that network. So there's a lot of personalized counseling that goes on. Great. Yes, Diane. Hi, Diane. Are you mute? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay. Anybody who has a question can just talk. Unmute yourself. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, well, my questions are more about the drug plan. That sounds as if you're getting to that, right? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, the drug plans are something that um, there's not much to talk about. Okay. You really have to do it on the computer. And if you're good enough to do it yourself and understand all the things that are on there, uh, you're better than me. But 
it's good to have help when you're trying to change your drug plan. I worked with somebody today who had a lot of uh, different medications and some of them were things that Medicare didn't want to cover and they were very expensive. So then we would, what we do sometimes is we go, we look at the drug plans themselves and you can set up the, um, well, I can, I can take you there if there's interest in doing that. We can go to the internet and go to medicare.gov. Now, usually you need a username and a password so that when you go into this plan, your drugs will be in your page. But we can also go in anonymously and uh, make up some drugs. So this is all on medicare.gov. So say we're looking for a drug plan, you can also get an advantage plan. Uh, you put your zip code in. And then it asks you if you're covered by any of these low income programs. And then you continue without logging in. Of course, you want to see the prices because that's why you're here. And then just throw a few drugs at me that people, that seniors are taking. Just yell Seems them out. One at a time though, what happened here? Hydrochloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> Someone's taking that? Hang on. For, for rheumatoid arthritis, yeah. Okay, um, I don't know what happened to my share. Let me go back to the internet. Hydroxychloroquine. Oh, good. Continue. And usually you get to a point where it's it's going to show up, and then you pick your dosage, and you pick your how many you take in a month, and you add it to the drug list. So let's add another drug. Rapatha. Okay, so that's a that's a brand name only drug. Uh, Let's add some other ones, some more common ones like uh, Lipitor. Okay, Lipitor. Here's Lipitor, and this will tell us that there's a generic, and we say okay. Here we we go. pick our doses. We go to 20, we do once a day. So let's take another one. <laughs> Give me another drug. Metapropol. 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 Yes, thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Any they All know right. how to spell it on the uh, drop down. Yes, I know how to spell it too. And who said Lantus? Lantus. I did. Okay. One sick puppy here. No. <laughs> All right. So. So then you get your drugs and you add them all to your list. And if you're signed into Medicare, your drugs will stay on your page. Mm -hmm. But we're just making up a fake person. Then you put done adding drugs and then they want you to choose pharmacies. So I like to choose the big pharmacies to because each drug plan works with a different pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So you want to you can always check with the plan you're getting what pharmacies will be the cheapest for you to use. So mm -hmm. I'll put mail order, save on, CVS, and I like to find a Walgreens. Yeah. There's a Walgreens. Okay. And then, you know, if somebody has, what happened? I missed one. I missed the CV, uh, CVS. What happened to my CVS? Okay, we'll go back to the first page and this we'll do a CVS. Mm -hmm. And then you might want to say, how about Pelham? I like to go to Pelham. Yeah, so we like Pelham. <laughs> you could do five comparisons. So then you go in and you want to see your plans. So what you want to what you want to know is what your out of pocket is going to be, including your premiums and your drug costs. You want to know the lowest total out-of-pocket. 
So you can set it for this. There are other, you can just set for one or the other, but most people want to know how much is coming out of their pocket. And then this fake person that we made up, the top one that comes up first, if you already have a plan, the first one that'll show up is the plan you currently have. And then you can compare it to the cheapest plan for next year. But this is coming up with the cheapest plan for this person who takes all those drugs. So this person, uh, the best plan would be a three and a half star plan. This would be the annual deductible, the uh, monthly premium. This is what you pay every month that comes out of your social or you pay the bill. And then your total for the whole year for your premiums and all your drugs is gonna be $2,300. And it's pretty much the same if you go to mail order or if you go to a network pharmacy. And this is a good plan. So a lot of plans have a deductible that's $480 this year, but there's mm -hmm. a few plans that have a zero deductible. And then there's this plan that has a hundred dollar deductible. Now the deductibles only apply to you if you are taking tier three and above drugs. So if all of your drugs are the common tier one and two drugs, you won't pay a deductible at all. And if you wanna see what you're gonna pay, you go to plan details. And they're showing you again, your total monthly premium will be this and your retail pharmacy costs at a drugstore will be this or mail order will be this. When you go down, it tells you what are your preferred pharmacies. So with this particular Cigna plan, you can't go to CVS. CVS will cost you more, but actually all these other pharmacies are in network, including Pelham. So then if you wanna see how much your yearly costs will be for each drug, mm they'll show you and they'll show you how it differs. So if you're taking a tour of a statin, you're gonna pay nothing for it with a mail order pharmacy. And if you go to an in-network pharmacy, you're gonna pay $4 a month or $48 for a year. But if you go to a non-network pharmacy, you're gonna pay $107 for the year. So if you go down to the bottom, you can see the prices. So if you go to mail order or if you go to save on or if you go to Walgreens, you will be paying fifth, about $1,600 for all your drugs over the whole year. And actually Pelham is in that as well. So they distribute it a little differently. Some of them charge you zero for this, some charge you zero for that. So you can see the prices are extremely variable, but here you go. So this is the other thing we do. So the hydroxychloroquine is gonna cost you a lot of money. So let's go down to the bottom where you can see your pharmacy. So if we look at, let's say Walgreens, this is what you would pay at Walgreens every month. So hydroxychloroquine is $42 a month at Walgreens. So then we go to GoodRx and you can put that into GoodRx. Does everyone know what GoodRx is? Yeah. yeah. It's internet. We'll talk about that in a minute. So here's your hydroxychloroquine on GoodRx, and this will tell you that instead of paying $42 a month on your drug plan, Ooh. you can get it at Costco for $17, or at Wegmans for 20 bucks, or at Walmart, oh. or at Weiss Pharmacy for 28. And then if you watch any commercials, you know that you can go up to the pharmacist with your phone, and you can hold up your phone and that they give you this price, okay? So that's one thing. So the other um, expensive medication, where were we, is Rapatha. 
So Repath is also $42 a month. So we can go look on GoodRx for Repatha. But then you'll see that without your drug plan, Repath is gonna cost you a fortune, mm. but it's only gonna cost you $42 on your drug plan. Wow. So we do a lot of this stuff just to see. So then I would go back and I would say, well, you're gonna take you're gonna get your hydroxychloroquine from good Rx instead. So let's go back to your drug list. And let's take out the hydroxychloroquine. And then let's see how you do. So then you go back in. And then uh, this uh, Cigna plan is still the best, uh, but your costs for the whole year have gone down somewhat because you got rid of the hydroxychloroquine. Sometimes it shoots you into a different plan. Uh, so that we can play around with this. And I urge you all to play around with this. It's kind of fun to see what the differences are. Um, there are certain things that Medicare hates paying for, like, like estrogen products for women and acne medications <laughs> because they don't think that old people should be using those drugs. So they're very expensive and very often you can get them a lot cheaper if you don't use your drug plan. So uh, that's how we get you a drug plan. And then we, when you decide there's one you like, we click the enroll button and then you're done. We enroll you. So you can, can you, kind of pick and choose where you get your, I mean, different drugs. You don't have to get all the drugs at one pharmacy. Right, you don't sign up for a pharmacy, you sign up for the plan. So that's a good point. So if you have the intestinal fortitude, which a lot of people don't have, let's go back here. If we can get it up again here, I don't know what's happening. <sighs> Let me... Can you still see the screen? No. It's... The Cigna, you can't see the Cigna? No. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go back and try once more. There it is. There it is. Okay, so, so there you go. So then we saw the comparison between the drugstores. So you might wanna get your zero uh, charge drugs at Savon, Pelham, or Walgreens. Um, well, I mean, th this is just going, CVS is more expensive because it's out of network, but you're right. Sometimes even the in-network pharmacies are charging wildly different prices. Uh, okay. But clearly, if you look at this more carefully, you might say, well, my, well, here, my Lantus is zero at this pharmacy and my something else, the metoprolol is zero at this place. And you can pick and choose because you're not signing up for a, a drugstore, but you just need to bear in mind which drugstores work. Some woman called me a couple of days ago and she said, I really want to get out of my drug plan. It's costing me a fortune. And she had Silver Script. Now, Silver Script is a very inexpensive plan. It's a very good plan. And I was shocked to hear that they were charging her a fortune. So we went in and her she was getting all of her drugs at Rite Aid, which was out of network for Silver Script. And mm -hmm. I told her she needed to go to whatever the pharmacies were that were in network and they were going to cost her like a 10th of what she was paying. So wow. it's always helpful. I mean, a lot of these things you can do by yourself. In fact, Medicare is under the delusion that everybody's going to go in and use the plan finder and figure it out themselves. But it's always helpful to have somebody walk you through it, at least the first time. So you understand what all the, the choices are, all the tabs that you look at all the things that you can find out from the from the plan finder. Well, that's why I asked because I don't take that many medications, but 
when I first signed up for D, I was taking one that was expensive. It was a two yes. year deal. And then I wasn't taking it anymore. And what we chose, originally I worked with somebody and they chose the plan because of that particular medicine. But right. When I tried to do it myself to figure it out. Honestly, I just gave up because it was, right. it was overwhelming. <laughs> Um, call me <laughs> yeah I should call because me. you know for the last several years I said I don't want to go through that again I keep signing it up but it, it's it was chosen because of a plan I haven't you know of a drug I haven't taken for for several years now right exactly so you know I had so uh one of the things is that you do have to have a drug plan or you will get a penalty when you decide to get one and silver script now has a drug plan that costs seven dollars and twenty cents a month so even if you're not taking any drugs, it's easy to get that plan because you have to have a plan and you might as well get the cheapest one if you're not taking any drugs. And I know my husband and I are on two different drug plans because we take yes. different medications and found out which would be the best given what meds we were taking. Right. Um, we're all and, individuals in Medicare. Yeah. And I have a question about, um, I guess it's a Medigap. I didn't realize that's what, it, you know, the um, supplemental yes. coverage. Um, we tur I turned 75 this year. So um, I guess because of that, the price of that plan went, the, that I'm on went up. And how often does it go up? And um, does that change at all? Or how does that work? It goes up a little bit every year. Uh, and I think there's a limit set by the government, as opposed to the Advantage plans, the Medigap plans are very well supervised and there's rules and people look at them and enforce the rules as opposed to the Medigaps that kind of, I mean, the Advantage plans that kind of get away with murder. Uh, if you've read any recent articles in the New York Times about the Advantage plans. They are really doing a lot of shady things to get uh, people signed up. Uh, but the meta gap does go up a little bit every year. And there are ways that you can sometimes get the costs down. Like if you're in an F or a G plan, which are yeah. the most full coverage plans. Yeah. Um, so the insurance company at their discretion can let you switch into an N plan, which is a very good plan, but costs about $30 a month less than the G and more than that, less than the F. Um, and they're only gonna be incentivized to let you switch if they think you're going to leave them completely. So you kind of have to call them up and give them a sob story and say you just can't afford it anymore and you're, you know, you're going to leave and get something else and give your money to somebody else. Then they might say, okay, we'll let you take the end plan. And, you know, if we don't have a lot of time left, I was trying to find how to show you the end plan, but it's... Um, that's what I'm on now. So that's why I'm kind of listening to this. I'm going, yeah, oh. no, it's a very good plan. Let me see yeah. if, I can, if I can show it to you. Uh, share screen. Yeah, ah, here it is. Ah, there it is. Okay, so these are the Medigap plans. And currently the best plan with the best coverage is the G plan. And the second best plan with a lot of also good coverage is the N plan. So the, uh, there's really very little difference between them. Uh, they both pay for that giant um, admission to the hospital. Deductible, they both pay for that. Uh, they both pay for your hospital co-insurance if you're hospitalized for more than 60 days. Uh, they both pay for the first three pints of blood in the hospital. They both pay all your co-pays for skilled nursing. And they both pay for all of any of your hospice care co-pays. In terms of Part B, outpatient 
Um, nobody anymore is paying for your annual Part B deductible. The F used to pay for that, and some people are old enough to have an F plan, but the F plan is no longer economical. Uh, so no, so you just have to pay your own Part B deductible. But after you've paid the Part B deductible for the year, both the G and the N plan will cover all of your co-pays for labs, x-rays, outpatient services, and medical equipment. The G will pay all your co-pays for your doctors. The N plan, you have to pay $20 whenever you go to a doctor's office, whether it's a primary or a specialist. And you have to pay $50 if you go to the emergency room, whereas the G will cover that as well. So that's the major difference between the two plans. And they're about $30 apart. The only other difference is that in states that are not Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, and a couple of other states, um, the, Pennsylvania does not allow what's called excess charges. So most states in the union allow excess charges, which means that a doctor or a facility or anywhere you go can charge you an extra 15% over what Medicare approves that will come out of your pocket. And the G plan covers those excess charges and the N does not. Mm. So if you're gonna do a lot of traveling to places that are not in the near Northeast, this may be a consideration as well. But in general, the N plan is, is a great plan. Okay. And some people who want a little more coverage uh, get the G. But as I also told you before, outside of the US, both plans cover 80% of any emergency care during the first two months of any trip after you pay a deductible. And both plans pay 100% for preventive care and screening like mammograms and colonoscopies, many vaccines, but not Shingrix. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it covers Tdaps and hepatitis and pneumonia. Okay, good. So those are the benefits of the Medigaps. Those are the things you pay for. And a G plan for a woman who's uh, just 65 and want getting a Medigap, it's going to cost somewhere around $125 to $135 a month. An N plan will cost under $100 a month to start. And then they all go up 10 or 15%. Uh, and sometimes they do get quite expensive. So if you want to drop down to the N plan, like I said, that's kind of at the discretion or how well you are at convincing your insurance company. Now, if you're a very healthy person with no chronic illnesses, you can get a new Medigap and you can switch to another company and get an end plan. Um, but you have to be able to pass the medical underwriting that you'll have to go through. They ask you a lot of questions and then they set a price and there's no law that says they have to sell you one. Whereas when you first go on Medicare, you have a guaranteed right to get one of these plans at the lowest possible cost. So and then, my, plan and then, says, my plan says FX. I don't know. Uh, is that a high deductible F? I don't know what no, that is. No, I've never had to pay anything for any anything. Okay, it's so you have the F, yeah. So you're paying a lot of money for the F right now. So do you think we should re-examine that? Uh, you might want to. You might want to call your company and ask them. Well, I think you have to be prepared first. I wouldn't do like an exploratory questioning. I would try to figure out whether you have any uh, significant chronic illnesses and whether you can be convincing enough are you both in the same company with your supplement? Mm -hmm. So they, they may really not want to lose you both. 
So they might let you go to an N plan uh, or even a G plan, which will be less expensive um, rather than lose you entirely. I mean, if you have specific questions, call me. You don't have, I don't want to ask you yeah. in the group. Well, I, I have coverage through AARP, United Healthcare, and I was able to drop down to an N plan without any hassle. That's good. That's nice of them. But you're already paying a nice amount of money because you're in an AARP plan. So again, that's a whole other issue, which, you know, I don't know if we were meant to stop at eight o'clock, but um, there is a tool when you get a, a Medigap, you usually go through a broker, uh, which is a person selling these plans, but they work with lots of different insurance companies. So they tend to work on your behalf as opposed to just trying to get it for the one company they work with. And they use a tool and you can see that the prices of each, now a G plan is a G plan, no matter how much you pay for it or how little you pay for it. And you can see if I had a chance to show you the tool that the prices for these plans vary widely. And you have to know going in what you should expect to pay or you will overpay for your plan. So Myra, were we meant to end at eight o'clock or can we continue if people have questions? You're on mute. I think that um, you could continue a, a, a bit if people have more questions. If people have questions, yep. Marnie. Hi, uh, I, I'm on an end plan uh, on a Medigap and the price has gone up almost every six months. Um, yeah, I, think I think it's it started off being the cheapest plan uh, at the time that I, I took it up, but now I'm not sure where it stands in the overall pecking order. But you know, if I just look at the monthly premium, but I'm, I'm paying like $127 and change and it's going up again as of the first. I'm not sure exactly, but it, it just keeps going up. And um, I hate to tell you, but that's a pretty good price. Okay. Well, that's what my question was. You know, yes. I, you and I are going to be talking on Friday, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm trying to deal with that. And uh, I have the Cigna drug plan, which also is going up, but it's a modest amount anyway. Um, and well, I, we, can, we can probably do something about the drug plan. Yeah. But we'll, okay. we'll talk about that. Right. You know, um, I think that if people have sp specific um, questions about their coverage, it might make more sense for them to make an appointment with you. Right. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Good suggestion. So does anybody else have any questions about the whole Medicare process or changing plans or things I haven't mentioned. I, I have yeah. one more I have one more question and, and yes. it has to do with dental benefits. Yes. They've been touting it and, and I've been watching rather closely because I need some dental work done. And I've been paying well you froze but I'm gonna talk about dental. So Medicare right now does not cover glasses, hearing aids and dental. Although no, they every, just every year I go off. Yes. So the, when you get a broker to buy a Medigap, you can usually also purchase, and you can do this at any time, a dental hearing and vision plan, which um, is pretty, pretty reasonable. I mean, I pay like $31 a month for my plan. Oh. And it has de yearly deductibles. And when you first start out, there's exclusions. You can't get such and such for six months or so and so for a year. But then after that, it starts paying 80%. So that is something to look into as opposed to 
changing yourself to a Medicare Advantage plan, which as you get older and sicker is going to cost you way more than you think it will. And the N plan will cover just about everything you need, even if it seems like it's going to be more expensive. I mean, it's you really have to think about the long term and not the short term. I know, yes, and I know this is a bad year for everybody. So if we're going to change the Medigap or change anything, then other than the what you just addressed, it has to be done by December 7th, is that correct? No, Medigap, uh, that doesn't have a deadline. Oh, okay. Because oh. it's a it's private insurance. Okay. And you can you can go and you know negotiate with them anytime. Thank you. And so, the same with a vision hearing and dental. That has nothing to do, that's a private plan, it has nothing to do with uh, Medicare rules. So you can buy that through through a broker. So we're never gonna get to national medical care, which is in so many other countries. My father, this is a number of years ago, but we were in Sweden and he ended up, he had a form of food poisoning, but nobody knew that, you know, so he was put in quarantine. We were traveling in Europe and, you know, when he came out, he said, guess what this cost? And it was, this, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Oh, that's they chart. So one of our Medicare counts. So I was going to say when we we're talking about out of the country and the Medigap covering you, I usually also say, but if you're traveling to a civilized country uh, that has national health insurance, very often it's, it will cost yeah. you nothing. So one yeah. of our Medicare counselors, uh, he travel, he teaches a lot in Italy. And he was there several years back and he had a bad fall and he just ripped his shoulder apart. And he was hospitalized and he had surgery and he had a race for a long time and he paid nothing. Mm -hmm. So my sister also, we were in India. She was, I don't know, they were out in Rajasthan coming back into Delhi and she, she had texted, um, that she needed probably a root canal. And uh, so my son-in-law's parents are both surgeons. So they went to bat for her. You know, this is on New Year's Eve day at 3 p.m. And they, he got, they got, he, um, Ajay said, it's not the top dental surgeon in New Delhi, but the second best. And again, my sister came out and said, it was, you know, just, I don't know a minimal amount of money and we're all looking around going, okay, what can we get done? <laughs> right, and Medicare, by the way, is not a system. It is a patchwork quilt of which all the parts and plans were added piecemeal. And that's why they all have different rules and different this and different that. And we do not have any sort of a healthcare system in this country. And I wish we Terrible. would get yeah. some kind of a national health plan. But, you know, first we got to deal with Trump and his cohorts and make sure they go away forever. So you can send your contributions of cheeseburgers to Mar-a-Lago and hope <laughs> that they continue to clog up the arteries of certain people that we don't like. So Joan, thank you very much for doing this presentation. <laughs> and welcome. please, um, would you um, post your, how to contact yes. you again? So that... In the chat. I'm going to put yeah. my phone number in the chat. Great. Thanks a lot. It's Thank great you. that you know so much. But Thank don't you. turn off the, uh, the, the meeting until everyone has a chance to look in the chat. No, I'm not turning it off. Um, but thanks for reminding And me. I am also in the, uh, in the NVN handbook, so... You really okay. need me for that. Oops, I can't get my name right. Why is that? Okay. There's my phone number and you can call me anytime and I probably won't pick up the phone, but I will call you back as soon as possible. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you so thank much. You here, I hope. And uh, yep. 
So are we ending leave now? You will will you want to end it? Uh oh yeah, I, I'll stop the recording. It. <clears throat> oh she she went away. Okay, thank you very All much, right. Mike. Okay, bye-bye. And Joan, I'm calling you. <laughs>